Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that uh, people don't realize is there are not only physical laws, but there are spiritual laws. Amen? Uh, here, if you run a stop sign or red light, usually if there's a police officer there, you're going to get snagged and get pulled over. Amen? Now, if they got you on film, you're going to get a notice in the mail. Amen? And you can make every excuse there is, and even if somebody used your car, you're still going to get busted. Again. No. <laughs> Nobody escapes the law. Even pastors. <laughs> <laughs> there's a price to pay for breaking the law hallelujah but in that the, in the spiritual laws people don't realize that just because you didn't get struck by lightning right then and there you know, or, or something terrible didn't happen to you right then and there doesn't mean it's not going to amen Jesus explained to us so powerfully he said he who sows to the flesh will, creep, will reap corruption. Amen? He who sows to the Spirit will reap life. And so in this, that is a spiritual law. In Romans 8, would you go there with me for a moment? And we do have Bibles if you need one. If you've never read one, it's a good day to start. Because it is your basic uh, instructions before uh, getting out of here, right? Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, in verse 1. Hallelujah. See, when you know Jesus, there's a difference with between saying you love him than being in love with him. Because when you're in love with him, you love his presence. You know that you can't exist without his presence. His presence is your fulfillment. Other than that, there's a disconnect. There's a long distance. There's a lot of people that have a long distance relationship with Jesus. In other words, they kind of like write letters. That's why it takes them a long time to get an answer. Because they move so much that Jesus, even Jesus can't keep up, with their, keep up with their address. <laughs> but in this, in Romans 8, in verse 1, it's, would you read it with me? It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, to somebody who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Let me share with you. When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you committed to a covenant. It is a covenant. That means it's a vow you've made. So he says, look at all those who have committed to a covenant. He said there's no condemnation as long as they don't break it. Well, I believe the one saved always say, well, you're deceived. No such thing Jesus ever said. He said, now look, at, there's therefore no, non, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk a what? According to the flesh. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. According to, why? Because if you live a life according to the flesh, you have broken covenant with him. But according to the spirit, only those who walk according to the spirit, that means living in the spirit, amen, submitting to the ways of God, his law. How many of y'all know his Bible is law? Amen. Anything he says is a law. Verse 2, for the law, everyone say law, the law of the Spirit, because there is a law of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So if you're cooperating with the Spirit of life, you're under the law of the Spirit of life, you're no longer cooperating with the law of sin and death of the flesh. You're following the Spirit. Remember, the word believe means to what? follow. You can't just say you believe and go out and do whatever you want. That ain't going to work. 
That's not what Jesus, didn't he go up to all of his disciples and say what? Follow me. Follow me. He didn't say, hey man, just believe me, I'll talk to you later. No, he didn't. He said, follow me. Verse 3. For what the law could not do in it that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, an account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, that the what? Righteous requirement. That means that there is a condition. There is a condition that you and I must meet to get things. Does everybody get this? People want healing. Well, there's a condition you need to meet. You want deliverance? There's a condition you need to meet. You want things from the Lord? There's a condition that you need to meet all the time. In fact, he says you don't get things because of the lack of faith. Amen? There is a condition to meet in everything that you and I do in the kingdom. The righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Might be fulfilled. That means cooperation. In us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things that are what? Spirit. To be carnally minded is what? Death. That's separation. It's death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. There is a difference. So there is a law. Amen? And in these laws, these are called covenant vows. When you and I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we stepped into a covenant vow to God Almighty. And daily we are to perform these vows. Amen. Seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. Right? But seek his righteousness. So anything that's not according to the will of God, the word of God, is actually covenant breaking. And people don't realize that. Vow breaking. <clears throat> One of the things that the Spirit said to me this morning, says, too many times I'm trying to get things to my people, but I have to hold it back because they don't fulfill vows. Unfulfilled vows. Unfulfilled. Now, we've heard this before. But we're in a time and season right now where the enemy is ser searching out every area where there's an unfulfilled vow that hasn't been put out in the blood of Christ now, I want you to understand something. We repent for unfulfilled vows. Amen? Because an unfulfilled vow, when, you've, when you do not complete a vow, that means you lied. Amen? That's how God sees it. We lied. And, and all of this started years ago when one day the Lord said to me, you need to repent for showing up late. I said, why? It's my nature. <laughs> I said, Right called fallen nature and it wasn't that I was showing up latest because I said I was going to be somewhere at a certain time amen so when I told someone I was going to be somewhere at 11 o'clock and I showed up 10 minutes after I got a tap on the shoulder that said you need to repent for that I said why he says because you lied I said I lied I said I didn't mean it he goes you still lied See, there's, an there, there's, a, there's a, a high-power demonic attorney. He's been hired by the Dem Democratic Party, but he's still, you know, no. <laughs> Democratic Party, sorry. But anyways, in this, the word says that the accuser of the brethren is before God all the time accusing me and you. So he's always looking for a loophole to access me and you. Does everybody get it? And the Lord said to me, you need to repent for this unfulfilled vow. Even though you were 10 minutes late, you said you were going to be somewhere and do something. You didn't do it. I thought, wow. So that became a part of my prayer every single day. Lord, anything that I didn't fulfill today, I repent and put under the blood. Now, I, we did a teaching on this a while ago. But the Lord said to me, this morning he said, you know, I forgive my people. Amen? Because when you and I do this, it brings a curse on us. And we don't even realize that we have a curse on us. For saying something we 
said we were going to do and didn't do. It brings a curse. The enemy has no access to you without a curse. And in this curse, he said, even though they repent, there are certain areas that I'm still requiring them to fulfill the vow. Does everybody understand? Now, I don't know what all of these areas are. These are your personal areas that he's dealing with each individual. Well, Lord, forgive me for this. Forgive me for that. I was going to do this and do that, and I didn't do that. You know, and that some of those, I mean, we're forgiven for them all, but we still reap what we what? So. So he said there's areas where some people will never reach a certain level until they fulfill what I've already asked them to do. I thought, wow. So you and I may be forgiven for something, but there's an area where he is requiring me and you to fulfill something. Not in everything, amen, but in certain things. And this is where your personal relationship with the Lord, he's going to let you know what you need to fulfill to continue to move on and grow. Does everybody understand that? 1 Peter chapter 5. Good, we just started now. Now we, now we can get into it. Covenant vows. First Peter chapter five. You know, he said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And, and, and I can't tell you how many people I've spoken to that tell me, no, don't tell me, don't tell me. I don't want to know. They think that if they don't know, ignorance is an excuse. I don't. Yo, dumb, dumb. That ain't going to happen. There are no excuses. Even the word said there's no excuses. Amen. Every one of us was born with a desire to seek out truth. Everyone was born with a desire to find out who I am, why am I here, and where am I going. That desire has been imparted in you. And it's our responsibility to find it out. And if you truly seek Jesus, if you seek truth, you'll end up finding Jesus. Because he is the truth. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. Would you read it with me? Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your what? Elders. That doesn't mean by age. Amen? He's talking about those who are more mature in the kingdom. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. Humbleness, not pride. And be clothed with humility for God resists the what? Proud. And gives grace to the humble. Again, I want to repeat to you something vitally important. And this is a great deception out there. Grace is not God's unmerited favor. It's his unmerited love. Grace is God's plan of escape. You cannot say that you are saved by grace unless you're partic participating and cooperating with the plan. Does everybody get this? I mean, this is so important. I'm saved by grace. I can go out and do whatever I want. No, you can't. People go out and serve the devil. Well, then you were never saved from the beginning. What the heck is that from? I mean, they got all kinds of excuses. That's not how it is. It's because they can't truly interpret the Word of God without the Spirit of God. God, He says, God resists the proud but gives a way of escape to the humble. And what are we escaping? The deception. Amen? The deception of Satan's kingdom and his lies and the wrath of God. <laughs> Verse 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be alert, be vigilant, be consistent. Alert and consistent. Alert and consistent. That's where people fall short. They're not consistent. And if you're not consistent, can you be alert? No. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about with a big mouth like a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. That's called the voice of the stranger. You, there's voices that come at you. 
Amen? The devil is a voice of deception to come to influence. His purpose is to get you to break a covenant vow. He knows that if he can get you to sow in the flesh, he's got access to you. He knows that if he can break, co break covenant, he has access to you. Every vow is a covenant. Does everybody get it? In Judges 13. Covenant vows. When people get married, they make a covenant vow. There is a law to that. The Lord said, unless there's fornication or whatever, you're not to divorce. Amen? Well, you know, worshiping other gods and other idols, you have a legal right to divorce also. It's called a certificate of divorce. Even God himself divorced Israel. Why? Because they were playing the harlot, worshiping other gods. But they're going to get remarried soon. And there's going to be a big party in heaven. And we're invited. If you didn't get your invitation, you better start praying hard. <laughs> Judges 13, verse 1. Let's speak it. Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. So when the children of Israel disobeyed God for a period of time, he said, all right, I'm going to turn you over to your enemies. Amen? So he, they were under the Philistines' rule and control for 40 years. Now, there was a certain man, verse 2, from Zorah, of the family of uh, Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or symbol or drink or not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall reconceive re and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. This man was named as Samson. He was born, brought forth to come to deliver the Israelites out of the hands of the Philistines. So he said here, he says, you can't have, you can't basically eat anything from the vine. You can have grapes, you can't have raisins, Anything fermented, vinegar, nothing to that degree. Not only was a mother not able to eat, but he was not going to eat. This was a vow that was given to him. No razor could come to his head. Amen? So in this, this was a vow. This is where the spirit of might came upon Samson, so he was able to become very powerful. Does everybody understand? Nothing from the vine. It was, he, was, he, was, he had a call, he had a purpose and a destiny. It was a vow of covenant to protect him from the enemy's influence to interfere with the mission. So Samson was born with a mission. He was given a covenant vow to his mother and given it to him to protect him from the enemy so that he could fulfill the mission. Does everybody get this? Cool. Hallelujah. Go to uh, Judges 16. In verse 14. Was a bad boy. He was disobedient. And uh, unfortunately he fell into lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. And he fell in love with a harlot. Her name was Delilah. So don't name your kids Delilah, okay? <laughs> in verse 13, hallelujah. And Samson said, or Delilah said to Samson, until now you have mocked me and told me lies. 
So was Samson lying? Yeah, he lied because every time she asked him how, how this power came, whatever, he lied to her. Tell me what you may be bound with and how, and, and he said to her, if you weave seven locks of my head into the web of a loom, so she wove it tightly with the batten of loom and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep, pulled out the batten and the, womb, and the web from the loom. Then she said to him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. Now, you got to remember that she was being paid by the Philistines to get this information. Amen? She was a double agent. Verse 16. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death. That he told her all his heart and said to her, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I will become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his, all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more. And come up once more, for he told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistine came up to her and brought the what? The money in their hand. I wouldn't be surprised it was 30 pieces of silver. You know what I'm saying? Then she lured him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and made him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him. Sounds like the devil to me. And his strength left him. <clears throat> and she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at all the other times and shake myself from this. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Why? He broke covenant. He broke the vow. Does everybody understand that? First of all, he told her how to, how to do it. That was a vow breaking right then. Why? He knew she was after him, but he was blinded by lust. <clears throat> Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Um, and she said to the Philistines, go up upon him, uh, Samson, verse 20. So he woke from his sleep and said, I will go out just before the other times and shake off myself from free this. But he did not know that the Lord left him in 21. Then the Philistines took him and did what? Put out his eyes. I want you to understand something because spiritually what happens was when a person begins to break covenant, unfulfilled vows, they become blinding. Scales come back on their eyes. They usually get worse after a period of time unless they repent for it and come out of it. So the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. <clears throat> and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters, and he became a grinder in the prison. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Now the lords of the Philistines gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to rejoice. And they said, Our god has delivered into our hands Samson, our enemy, when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God has delivered into our hands our enemy, the destroyer of our land, and the one who multiplied our dead. So it happened when their hearts were married that they said, Call for Samson, that he may perform for us. So they called for Samson from the prison, and he performed for them. And they stationed him between the pillars. Then Samson said, uh, said to the lad who held him by the hand, let me feel the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. Now the temple was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, about 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. So they were watching Samson perform with strength and so forth. Then Samson called to the Lord saying, O Lord God, Remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once. 
O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple, and he braced himself against them, one on his right, one on his left. Then Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the Lord's and all the people who were in it. So that the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. And his brothers and all his family and household came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Estel, the, the tomb of his father, Maniah. He had judged Israel for 20 years. So again, even though Samson broke covenant, amen, at the end, the, God's mercy allowed him to fulfill it. But he reaped the whole time, didn't he? Even when he was doing it, he was still blinded. But his strength came back. But he was going to die. God released the strength for him to fulfill. But who wants to wait till you become blinded? Who wants to wait till your last breath? Amen? We have a mission to fulfill. We have been called before time, and we want to fulfill it. And we must be careful about unfulfilled vows and breaking covenant with God. Amen? Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Samson lost the anointing for a period of time, didn't he? That anointing was there to overcome the enemy. Acts chapter 5 and verse 1. <clears throat> Covenant vows. Let's speak it. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie? To what? To lie. It wasn't that they held back the proceeds. They could have just said, you know, we decided to uh, keep some of this and whatever. But they lied about it. You have lied to the Holy Spirit and kept back part of the price of the land for yourself. While it remained, was it not in your own? And after it was sold, was it in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? Why have you lied to men? You have not lied to men. You have lied to who? To God. You know, people don't realize that. That when they do something, they think they're getting away with it because they're lying to a man. When God is recording everything. Amen? Amen? And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young man arose, wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in. Not knowing what had happened, Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, Yes, for such and such a price. Then Peter said, how is it that you agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at her feet and breathed her last. And the young man came and found her dead and carried her away and buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. And I'm telling you what, I know everybody caught up on all their ties. In that area. Hello? Man, they caught up on everything. Whoa, man. You know, they did everything possible. They sold all of their material and goodies and brought out everything to catch up on everything. Why? Because they feared. They feared. People have no idea what's going to happen here shortly. We are falling into a time where covenant better be maintained. Because the more the more the more glory God listen, at that time, God's power and glory was phenomenal. It was on the beginning of the church. Amen. 
I mean, God's not changed. Man has changed. But thirst and hunger for God's presence has changed. There's a lot of things that have changed. And God is restoring. He's cleaning up the atmosphere now. He's going to start exposing and removing. More and more things are going to begin to happen. And you're going to find some of these things that we are reading about today begin to happen also. Ephesians chapter 4. How many of y'all know lying is covenant breaking? It breaks a vow, doesn't it? Amen. Do you bring a curse on yourself when you lie? Yes. Does it open the door to the enemy? Yeah, amen. Ephesians chapter 4. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk in the, as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind. What did he mean? Those that don't know, that are not in covenant with the Lord. So he's, you know, the, all of these epistles are written to believers. They're not written to unbelievers. They're written to believers. He says, man, look at this. I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk. Don't walk like the heathen. And the fertility of the mind, verse 18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. You've not so learned the anointing. You've not so learned the presence of God, the truth of God, the power of God. Indeed, if you had heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you would what? Put off. Concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful laws, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the what? The new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. 25. Therefore what? See, when it says therefore, he's saying cooperate. Therefore, putting away in what? What's the first thing he talks about? Lying. Therefore, putting away what? Lying. Lying. You know, people have a hard time being honest these days. They can't even be honest with themselves. Everything is a justification and a false reason. Be honest. Therefore, putting away lying. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Don't give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. Putting away lying, stealing, breaking. In other words, he's saying, put away the breaking of vows. Put away the covenant breaking of vows. People don't realize that this is how sickness comes on people. Sickness. All kinds of things. Plagues, poverty, curses. All kinds of things can come on a person because they're unwilling to repent for their unfulfilled vows because they're lies. Amen? Psalm 56. In verse 11, it says, In God I put my trust. 
I will not be afraid. Who, what can man do to me? Vows made to you are what? Are binding upon me, O God. I will render praises to you. For you have delivered my soul from death. Have you not kept my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living. So vows are binding. Does everybody understand that? When you make a vow, it is binding. When you agree with some... See, you got to... Life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? When you say yes to something, you're binding. So that's why you got to be careful where it says make your yeses yes and your noes noes. Hebrews 10. Vows are binding to God. Why did I make a vow with God? I made a vow with a man. It's vow. Any vow is binding. Hebrew. Hebrews 10. When I was out using drugs and alcohol and every other unclean thing, not only was I lying to myself and lying to everyone else, I tried to be an honest drug dealer. <laughs> it worked for a little while. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even, even before I was saved, I, I, I knew that lying was bad. So when I was telling the truth and somebody didn't believe me, I'd say, God knows. God knows. Whether you believe me or not, I don't care. God knows. It still didn't stop me from lying and using drugs. Because <laughs> God knew I was lying and using drugs. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know you know. Do you ever get around someone and say, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. That's all they do is they say, I know, but they don't do nothing about it. That's how we are when we're drug addicts. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, but don't do nothing about it. Until the I know, the I am finally says enough. You're going to die and go to hell if you don't do something quick. I'll never forget that. And I cried out to God one day and said, I can't take you home like this. You mean I can't get into heaven this way? Heck no. You're hellbound, son. Change my thoughts. Hebrews 10, verse 19. Is everybody there? Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus... By a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us do what? Hold fast the confession of our hope without what? Wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Let us consider one another in order to do what? Stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Again, I, you hear me say this all the time about the assembling. What did he say? He says, look it. It's essential that you assemble. Why do you constantly rebel against my requirement of you assembling. People miss many messages. They missed God's presence. Assembly. God isn't trying to get us in here to empty our pockets. Hello? He's trying to get us in here to change more and more of his image so that we can be refreshed, reconnected, and be prepared. Everything is prophetic. He releases something to prepare us. Amen? So many times people fall into that mistake or that, that trap because God was preparing something for them and then because they refused to assemble, they missed it. Is everybody okay? He said, let us consider one another to what? Stir up love and good works. What? Don't forsake assembling. 
Hold fast. Verse 26 says, For if we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, you're no longer covered. You willfully sinned. You willfully broke covenant. You die, you go to hell. There is no room for you in heaven. You die in fornication. You die in sin. You don't make it home. It's that simple. But I accepted Jesus. No, you broke covenant. Does everybody get it? It says it right here. If you sin willfully after you have received the knowledge after you received Jesus Christ, therefore no longer remains a covering for you. You are open for the enemy. But a certain fearful expectation of what? Judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Now you're an adversary. Anyone who's rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more worse punishment do you suppose will be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counting the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace, the way of escape? It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with suffering, partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you have compassion on me and my change and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your what? Your confidence, which has great reward. Listen to verse 36 is the kicker here. For you are in need of endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Here it is. So he's saying, after you fulfill what I've asked you to do, the vow, I will release the promise. Salvation is the same way. We accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Salvation is available to me and you. It says, work out your salvation, right? So after we've fulfilled our time here and fulfilled and done the will of God, the promise is access home. Amen? Verse 37. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. How, how, is there anybody in here that doesn't want God to be angry with them? Amen? I don't want God to be angry with me. But he's angry with many people. Doesn't mean he doesn't love them. But he's angry with them. Because they've turned their backs to him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe in the saving of the soul. Doing the will of God is a vow to salvation. He says no wavering, no compromising. Doesn't mean we won't make a mistake, but we repent and get, a, get going again. By assembling under the anointing of Christ is to refresh, reconnect, renew, restore to our first love. To be open to conviction, counsel, correction, and direction. Why? Because it brings protection. Just like the law that was given to Samson. It was to protect him, but he broke it. Broke that covenant. We are on a mission to fulfill our call, purpose, and destiny. Hebrew 12. Everybody okay? Twelve, twelve. Let's speak it. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang low and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. 
Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by many have become what? Defiled. Defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau. Who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it dil diligently with what? With tears. Wow. No place for true repentance. In other words, he did not repent for his unfulfilled vows. Amen. He sold his birthright for a bowl of porridge, you know. For one night, say, how many people sell their birthrights to get high for sex, for this, or for, for just they sold their birthright. They sold it all for eternity. Hebrews 3. Covenant vows. Is everybody there? In verse 7. Therefore, what? Verse, oh, verse 7, I'm sorry. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice and don't harden your hearts as in rebellion, in a day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers, what? Tested me and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation. And I said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Be aware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if, 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 that word if means cooperate. If we hold fast the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in Rebellion. Wow. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. Covenant vows. You know, when God created the rainbow, he made a covenant vow with Abraham and with mankind. He said he would never kill mankind again with the flood. Amen? So he's going to kill everyone with a fire. But he made the vow, no flood. Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? <laughs> Glory. Galatians 5. Where do I go with this? All right, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of... I'm in Ephesians. Are we ready? Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom by which Christ has made us free. And don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. In other words, there's a lot of people that justify themselves by their works. Why well, do this? I do that. I do th that. That ain't, gonna, that ain't happening. That's why Jesus always says, do you know me? But Lord, I'm a good person. Good people don't make it to heaven. Only those who eat of the tree of life make it to heaven. Amen? And if you eat from the tree of life, you will produce righteousness. The first thing that always was maintained in you is honesty. You hate lies. You want honesty in every area. 
For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. He says, you ran well who hindered you from obeying the truth. This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the, the whole lump. Go to verse 19. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident which are what? Adultery. These are individuals, whether they know it or not, have broken covenant with God. Does everybody understand that? They have bowel breakers, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not enter the kingdom of God of eternal life. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi 3. Verse 8. <clears throat> Is everybody there? It's good to hear the pages turning on a Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Will a man rob God? Anybody here want to rob God? <laughs> Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you, Lord? In tithes and offerings. People are robbing God all the time, man. Watch what he says. You are cursed. You are what? You're cursed. You're cursed. That means you got an open door to the enemy. That means you can't go forward. That means from you're headed towards death, not life. Amen? You're cursed. Why? Because you keep robbing God from his money. Listen, it's not his money. I mean, it's all his money, but he does it so that you and I get blessed. But he says, bring your tithes and offerings into the what? Storehouse. That's why he has locations called storehouses. Everyone that's been through this ministry should be donating at least 20 bucks a month. Everyone. Other than that, they're not grateful. Yeah, you have tithes and offerings. But anyone that's been taken care of through total freedom should be giving something every month. Why? Because they're connected. They're connected. It's more than tithes and offerings. It's, it's an offering. It's a connect. Does everybody get it? You want to be connected to the place where God rescued you. Is everybody okay? Look, this is not a Holy Ghost stick up. Amen? Although some people need it. I think that's why some people are afraid to raise their hands or afraid that somebody might take some on their mind. So they put their elbows on their hands and they do this, you know. He said, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, says the Lord, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food for my house. And try me on this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not, that there will not be room enough to what? Receive it. What a deal. <laughs> I mean, what a deal, man. <laughs> what the heck? How stupid can we be and still breathe? Cursed because of breaking vows of God. 2 Corinthians 6. And then two more scriptures. Then you can go have popcorn. But first repent. <laughs> And bless your popcorn. It 
So you can get convicted in a joyful way. <laughs> God is cool. Oh, happy days. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14. Don't be what? Unevenly yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has a temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, their God, and they will be my people if they do what? Come out from among them, be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what's unclean, and I'll receive you. I'll be a dad to you, and you'll be my sons and daughters. Don't touch what's unclean. Don't, touch, don't agree with it. Why? Because if you agree with what's unclean, you're going to break covenant with something else. Does everybody get that? Hallelujah. Touch, don't touch unclean things. You know, people don't realize that there's mood-altering drugs. That's an unclean thing. I need my antidepressants. Well, why are you depressed? Because you have a demon. It's a demon of oppression. See, because people don't realize that they're fighting spirits and they're open because of all the times that they're breaking covenants, unfulfilling vows, and unrepenting of them. They're opening themselves up. Now they're a hotel of demons that are not paying rent. Amen? They promote abortion, sexual perversion. Those are all broken covenants, man. They claim themselves to be Christians and are not. Christian means Christ-like and approved Christ's way. Some will never come to the place of fulfillment because many are still emotionally attached to these things of their past and they won't let them go. Again, they support and promote broken covenant vows. The price of salvation is cooperation and the plan is escape, isn't it? Amen? But we must cooperate with it. Second Peter 2. Covenant vows. You got to remember something too that, you know, the influence of the world wants to dumb down everything. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it wants to make everything okay. It's okay to touch unclean things. Basically, that's what they're trying to tell us. It's okay. It's okay, to, you know, to approve abortion. It's okay to for uh, uh, homosexuality and all the other. It's okay. I mean, they're trying to promote it in schools and everything else, and it's okay. It's okay to fornicate. Heck, you don't want to live with, live with them the rest of your life if you don't know if they're good sex. It's okay. Not in the eyes of God. Amen? Not in the eyes of God. Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, is everybody there? They allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them freedom and liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. Let's, let, here it is. People are trying to tell people how to tithe and offer when they're not doing it themselves. And let me tell you how to make money when they ain't doing the right thing themselves. And it's all over the place. A lot of people want to give counsel, correction, and direction to people when they got the national grand forest in their own eye. Amen? And they're trying to pull all the tree trunk out of yours. Well, they promise them liberty. They, promise, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if... At, if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the what? The beginning. For it would have been better 
for them not to have known the way of righteousness and having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it happened to them, according to the pro true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and is so having washed to wallowing in the mire. And I'm going to close at Philippians 2. In other words, these people were led, a, led away by vow breakers themselves. Philippians chapter 2. Is everybody okay? Are you learning something? You know, people sow time and they sow labor and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it's not always about sowing money, but it seems to be money seems to be the biggest stumbling block because money to many people is God. I can't live without money. No, you can't live without Jesus. Verse 1, First Peter or, or Philippians, I'm sorry. Philippians 2, 1. Is everybody there? Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing to be done through selfish ambitions or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let, it, let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself with no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross." Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but how much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain, Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on a sacrifice of service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Amen? You know, even the Lord warned us in, in the book of Timothy. He says, look, at, if you compete in athletics, you must compete according to the rules. Amen? To get the reward. It's the same thing in the spirit. Everything is recorded. Nobody gets away with it. And there are some things that you will have to fulfill. There are some things God is requiring you to pay back. There are some things. Only God can tell you what they are. And that's your personal relationship with him. Does he forgive us of everything? Yes. Yes, he does. But there are some things that must be fulfilled. Amen. To fulfill. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We welcome not only your counsel, correction, and direction, but conviction. And we do take this opportunity, Lord. We repent. We are very sorry for every area where we said yes and, and did a no. We repent for any time that we have robbed you. Anything that we've done that's broken covenant and offended you, Lord whether it be of our past or in our present. And we ask, Lord, that you reveal to us those things that need to be repaid so that we can be broke free from the curse and bondages. Again, we thank you for forgiving us. And you will always provide a way. And we promise you,
to give you all the glory as you prosper us in Jesus' name. Everybody sitting there?